and I'm aware that it does come with its risk, but I'm a fan of the company. I'm not telling anybody else to invest in the company. I think everyone should do their own research um, before making investment decisions. Disclaimer. If you wanna be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on everyone? My name's Obi and welcome back to Courtside Financial, the channel where we talk about business and technology. In this video, we're going to be just giving some candid thoughts on NEO. We're also going to be flashing back to the first video that I ever did on this channel um, as it pertains to NEO stock. I feel like this video is overdue. It's going to be a great video. It's going to be a great podcast if you're streaming from any of our major, major streaming platforms. But anyways, if you're new here, make sure that you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. Click the notification bell icon as your engagement it really does help out the channel in a very big and a very real way. All right, so I'm just gonna get straight into the video. In this video, I just wanna give some real candid thoughts on NEO. Um, obviously there's a, and this is going to be an opinion piece of course, but obviously there's a lot of um, negativity around the stock price right now. I've tried to convert this channel into a channel where we just mostly speak on the news because, um, or, or try to get even too high on the highs or too low on the lows. Uh, for lack of a better term. A lot of people have been kind of, a lot of investors have been very upset with NEO. You know, they're spending money on a lot of things. They're cash, they're burning a lot of cash. To keep it quite frank, they're spending a lot of money on a lot of things. They're burning a lot of cash. Um, their deliveries are lacking behind their competitors such as Xpong or Lee Auto. Um, they're not up there with the BYDs or the Teslas who are at the top of the new energy vehicle market right now. And so you guys are all asking me, hey, what's your opinion on the stock? What's your opinion on the company from a financial perspective? To that, I say price does not equal value. Uh, Neo for me is a long term play and I feel the exact same way I felt when I posted my first Neo vi video um, three years ago. You guys even go check out that video. Go read the comments at that time um, and go see what people were saying at that time. But I feel the exact same way, right? We have a company that is doing big things. And I feel like at the time, um, a lot of people missed out on the opportunity to invest in a company like Tesla because they value Tesla strictly as a car company and not as a technology company. At its core, that's what I view Neo as still not a car company, as a technology company. My thoughts have not changed at all. And obviously, cycles are going to repeat themselves. Markets are cyclic. Um, at times, companies that are um, growing can be cyclic as well. They go through these big volatile swings. Sometimes everybody who invested in the company is extremely happy and then it gets to a point where they're, you know, extremely negative, extremely pessimistic. Me, I try to stay leveled out. What am I doing with the company right now? I'm consistently buying every other week. And I'm aware that it does come with its risk, but I'm a fan of the company. I'm not telling anybody else to invest in the company. I think everyone should do their own research um, before making investment decisions. Disclaimer. But anyways, um, overall, at a high level, my opinion has not changed. Still bullish on this company. Still obviously talking about this company all the time. Still kind of centering um, the discussions around it, even though we have started venturing out and posting more tech news as well. Just trying to keep people informed here. So with that being said, let's finally get into the video. You guys watch this video, let me know what you think. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Courtside Financial. This is a brand new channel, so if you're new here and you wanna be a part of it, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit the like button. Those things really do help out the channel and also I wanna know what your thoughts are on NEO in the comments below. So if you've been keeping up with NEO stock in any way, shape or form, you know that this stock has had a lot of volatility and it's pretty much been a wild ride for shareholders um, and investors, as well as NEO the company itself. My personal experience with NEO, I bought in last May, um, May 15th, which was, I believe my cost average was somewhere in the 470s range. 
and I continue to contribute to that position and continue averaging down through the lows, through the gains, just dollar cost averaging the stock. And when the stock was truly beaten up in like the twos, the ones, that's when I uh, contributed more than I usually do. And with that being said, I was able to bring my cost basis down to uh, I believe about 220 and I sold the stock at $4.70 in January, which left me with a huge profit in NEO stock. At that time, what I decided to do was stay on the sidelines and just kind of watch NEO stock. And eventually, a couple weeks ago, I bought in NEO at $3 and I sold my position at about $3.80 uh, locking in profits. And now I'm here and I'm back to getting long term and I'm going to explain to you guys my bullish case for NEO. NEO is currently trading at $4.04 at this time. It is 12.39 p.m. Eastern time. And what that means is that NEO stock is up about 18% for the past week. Now, there's a lot of reasons why the stock has been uh, kind of climbing uh, within the short within this short time frame. The biggest reason right now is because the Bank of America analysts upgraded the stock by 47 percent. Analysts are just starting to catch on and I believe that the stock is truly undervalued if you believe in the company and you believe in its long term value. Now I'm going to talk about why I believe in the company. As we all know, the demand for electric vehicles is certainly going to increase over time. The NEO story can kind of be thought of as the Tesla story. Let's think about the cost of electric batteries. The cost to produce an electric car battery has dropped 87% from 2010 to 2019 from $1,100 per kilowatt hour to $156 per kilowatt hour. That's a huge change. With that, I believe that we're gonna see a lot more uh, car manufacturers producing electric cars because the cost has cut down so much. And that's also going to have an effect on the consumer side because since the cost is lessening, that means that they will be more affordable for consumers. Not only is the cost to produce electric batteries uh, consistently dropping and will probably continue to drop over time. Now you also have to think about the other costs that are there when it comes to uh, having a car. A lot of the big costs that are associated with cars are maintenance. Um, when you think about internal combustion engines, there's a lot of problems that come with them. There's a lot of pieces and parts that um, are oftentimes breaking down and need repair and need service. When you think about electric vehicles, they're a lot easier to manufacture. There's less parts, there's less complications, meaning that there's less problems. Now, um, in terms of Neo and Tesla, it's pretty much like strapping a battery onto a frame as opposed to putting all these parts together. So that makes it more efficient because there's less things that are gonna break down, there's less complications to be worried about, and there's less expense as cost of ownership. Now, you also have to think about how much money that you're gonna save at the pump. Electric vehicles are saving you a ton of money at the pump as opposed to internal combustion engine vehicles, which um, gas prices are pretty cheap right now, but we don't expect them to stay that way. They will ramp up and um, like I said the battery cost is going down the man the overall manufacturing costs are going down for electric cars and um, not only that but there are there have been times and situations when the government has offered um, subsidies or tax credits to those who own electric vehicles not um, especially in China so it's gonna be this whole wave of disruption uh, that over time eventually pushes everyone um, out of this market inefficiency of internal combustion engine cars to um, the more efficient thing to do, which is electric vehicles. A lot of the mistakes that people are making when it comes to um, talking about Tesla and talking about Neo is that people think that they can't mutually exist which is completely incorrect. I expect that um, Tesla opening up their 
China factory will actually spur demand for NEO vehicles because NEO is a competitor that comes in at cheaper price points than NEO. And then also the Chinese will have a sense of nationalism when it comes to supporting uh, NEO since it is a Chinese EV manufacturer uh, as opposed to Tesla. And then the other thing is that the government is behind NEO. So first I wanna take a look at the Model X, which is Tesla's uh, flagship SUV at the time. And then I wanna take a look at the ES6, which is a a smaller version of NEO's ES8. So when you look at the Model X, if you wanted to get the cheapest version that Tesla has to offer, that would be their long range plus. With that, you're gonna get 351 miles of range on a full charge. You're gonna be able to do 155 miles per hour top speed, and you're gonna be able to go zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds. Um, now I really wanna talk about that zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds. Uh, when you think about the typical consumer, the typical buyers of SUVs, uh, they're not per they're not purchasing SUVs to kind of drive like it's NASCAR or anything, right? They're purchasing SUVs for the functionality and utility of it, as opposed to getting a smaller vehicle like a sedan or a coupe. They're purchasing it for practicality. It's a lot easier for uh, families to have an SUV than to have a car. So I don't think that the 4.4 um, zero to 60 matters too much to that typical consumer of an SUV. Now looking at the Neo ES6, what you can see here is that you're gonna get 610 kilometers of range, which equates to 379 miles of range. Zero to 60 time, uh, it actually says zero to 100 kilometers of 4.7 seconds, which equates to 62 miles per hour. So from zero to 62 miles in 4.7 seconds. So obviously this is um, slower than the Tesla. But like I said, when you think about um, the typical consumer of an SUV, no one is buying these to um, kind of go drive on the Autobahn per se and speed people are buying these for practicality and utility. There are three options when it comes to purchasing an ES6. You have your signature edition, you have your performance version, and you have your sporty version. Let's just go with the uh, signature edition and the performance version to keep things fair. If you went with the sporty version, which is a little bit slower, that would be $49,935. If you went with the performance version, that would be $55,514. So these are pretty much coming in at a way cheaper price than the Tesla Model X. So it's, and like I said, the Tesla Model X from a performance standpoint is a better car, but um, not when it comes to range. And when you're buying an SUV, you're buying it for practicality you're not buying it to uh, drive as fast as you can so what would you rather have would you rather be able to go a little bit faster in your SUV or would you rather be able to have longer range and uh, be able to recharge less now I do think that Tesla's range is going to increase in the future and I also think Neo's range is going to increase in the future and I did say that um, Tesla is the bigger name these two companies can coexist and Tesla uh, doing great things in China will ultimately drive demand for NEO. Now, why do I believe Tesla can drive demand for NEO? The NEO ES6 ranked number one on Auto Home's latest vehicle quality report above names like the Lexus EX, the Ford Focus, the Mazda CX-4, and the Audi, the Audi Q5. For the vehicle to rank number one, this is proof that NEO is making a good product. And personally, not only is the product good, but I also think that the product looks good. We know that reliability is a huge driver of consumer uh, purchase intentions and consumer demand in the automotive vehicle industry. So when you're making a reliable vehicle, 
I know for me personally, that's the first thing that I look for when it comes to purchasing a car. And I think this will make sense to a lot of other people who wants to keep on going to the mechanic, who wants to worry about um, unwarranted vehicle expenses, nobody. So this is a very big deal for Neo. They're making a solid product. And now the challenge becomes the business. What do I think Neo has to do? So Neo has a market cap of 4.2 billion uh, dollars and their annualized revenue sits somewhere around 1.5 billion dollars. It's important to understand that the automotive industry is capital intensive. It requires large capital upfront to remain sustainable. Um, and the problem with Neo is they've been burning cash since they IPO. I was not one of the people to buy Neo at the IPO price. Like I said, I bought it last year at May because I'm just not a buyer of IPO. So with Neo's earnings report being tomorrow, Thursday, May 28th, what we want to see is growth. What we want to see is that they actually beat the earnings per shares estimate of negative 26 cent per share. I think that they'll beat that, but who knows? No one knows. Um, Neo, if, if they want to survive, they're going to have to be able to scale and ramp up sales and uh, create more demand. I don't think the product is the issue. I think it's all just going to be based on that. One of the things to note is that when Neo reported their Q1 sales, they actually grew by 13.1%. Now, if we look at Ford sales in China for uh, Q1, they decreased by negative 44.9%. If we look at Volkswagen, they decreased by negative 52.7%. If we look at GM's Q1 vehicle sales, they dropped by 43%. Um, much like Tesla, this is pretty much looking like a lot of disruption is going to come forth in the auto industry and it's going to favor those who have who are in positions to take advantage of it i do want to talk about tesla and neo and again why they're in two completely separate places um neo is seeking funding to survive tesla is seeking funding because they are supply constrained i believe there's going to be a lot of demand for teslas but they aren't able to produce enough that's why they gathered funding at the beginning of the year Neo actually gathered funding to survive and um, the government has showed us that they are behind Neo and they are um, playing for keeps when it comes to electric vehicles. China might be the biggest power in electric vehicles. They have the biggest market for electric vehicles and they're taking this very seriously. The government has given Neo $981 million, almost a billion dollars in funding for a 21 for a 24.1% stake in uh Neo and the agreement to move Neo's operations to Hefe. Now, another thing that I want to hear in the uh what I want to hear in the earnings call is how is this agreement going to affect um US shareholders with giving them access to that capital? This was one of the stipulations, but I do think the capital was much needed. It's going to give uh, Neo a little bit of energy to do the things that they want to do and do the things that they need to do to stay afloat and continue to grow and continue to survive. Um, I'm so bullish on Neo because the automotive industry is continuing to change. Um, they are one of the players that are being extremely aggressive when it comes to um, ramping up sale, when when it comes to trying to ramp up sales and trying to gain market share. And I believe that the demand for their products will be spurred by the demand for Tesla, who is at another level currently. My thoughts on the share price being under five dollars um it pretty if they can survive and they can continue to grow their numbers then that price then neo is very undervalued at these prices now there are a lot of risk um i don't think that the government the chinese government will let this company go bankrupt there's a sense of nationalism the chinese want to be big in the automotive game they i believe that this is a company that 
um, can eventually go on for global expansion. But with all that being said, this is a speculative stock and there are there's huge upside, believe that, but also believe that there's huge risk that come with, with investing in this equity. Whatever happens in, in the earnings call, whatever is said could um, kind of be scary for US investors because Neo uh, Luckin Coffee was a case study of uh, pretty much Chinese stocks that scared a lot of people away from investing in China. Now, with them taking this deal from the government, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out because a lot of these companies use shell companies in the Cayman Island in order to be able to trade on the North American exchange. Um, and with that, there isn't a lot of protection for us, not the same protections that we have when we invest in US businesses. You think about um, how many times shareholders have actually filed lawsuits against particular companies as part of their protections as shareholders. Now, I don't think NEO um, being what it could be for China, being being the, uh, could possibly in the future be the staple of the automotive industry over there would uh, partake in such um, unethical actions when it comes to their books and their accounting practices. Good news is that the government is now inside of NEO, so will they let them fail is the question that we all need to ask ourselves. Not only that, but NEO has Intel, America's one of America's powerhouses of technology um, as a partner to help uh, squash any of the anti-Chinese rhetoric that's floating around, um, especially right now with a lot of talk about Chinese companies being delisted. Do I think NEO will be delisted? No, I think that there's going to be, uh, NEO stock will have its day, but that's just my opinion. None of this is investment advice. I look forward to seeing what happens after earnings and uh, how that's going to affect the share price, but I'm not someone who's looking to swing trade NEO anymore. I've already made two profitable swing trades on it. Um, I think it's been beaten up pretty badly in the past two years. And now I just want to uh, figure out when it's gonna be the right time for me to lock in a position and hold for the long term. I do wanna understand more about the funding deal and how that's going to affect us first. And also I want people to uh, think about how many shares of the company Lee Bin owns. He is the CN he is the CEO of NEO. Um, my guess is that he would wanna remain a billionaire as long as possible. So um, for him, it's in his best interest and not only his best interest, but also the shareholders interest to uh, continue to make sure that these shares continue to rise uh, over the long term. Uh, in an interview that he did last year, he said that a lot of American investors are not seeing the long-term value of NEO, and that's kind of what made me do a deep dive on this company and look into it a lot more and be able to form my own opinion and ignore whatever else you see in the news. That's going to be it for this video. Like I said, I want to know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Hit the like button. Click the notification bell icon. Um, and make sure you share the video as well and join the free courtside financial discord. I'll catch you guys in the next episode.